Hey, what's up, guys? This is Casey Redbeard, Redbeard Rants, and we are broadcasting live, not literally live, from Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. I have today with me a special guest, a proud member of the LGBTQS <laughs> LMNOP community here. Alphabet soup. <laughs> Alphabet soup. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about why it is so hard to find a good girl in 2024 and beyond. We're going to define what we mean by good girl and then solutions to absolve this, to actually find a good girl. So first of all, what is a good girl? I took some notes here. A good girl is girlfriend material, a girl that's not a hoe, doesn't show a lot of skin on Instagram, is someone you can be um, confident with. She's not going to have girls nights and get drunk and, like I said, do hoe things and be a hoe behavior. She's not going to run out and go find sugar daddies and start partying the moment you have a fight. Um, mentally stable, doesn't do drugs, not a gold digger, low body count, has never been to Dubai as a small private social media. Um, what else do we want to do? Feminine, um, cooperative. I have a whole video on this. I think we all know what a good girl is. Is there anything quickly you want to add to this list, Michael? No, I mean, I think that pretty much covers it. I think when I think of a good girl, I just want to make sure that I don't have to worry about what she's out doing. You know, she's a representation of myself. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to have to worry about her being out embarrassing me or doing something that makes me look bad. If I even have that question in my head, uh, that's not a good situation to be in. So yeah, it's just somebody that gives me confidence that they're going to be making me look good, that they're going to be loyal to me. That Loyalty. You know, and I think the biggest thing for me is a girl that understands how to police herself well, because any beautiful girl is is going to get male attention everywhere she goes. It doesn't matter whether she's involved with a guy or not. Uh, that's just the way that it is. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to be that guy who has to be like the enforcer or whatever. Um, she should just know how to behave. The the girl should understand how to police herself. Yeah, yeah there, sure. there's there's some coachability aspect. I I I said that specifically, but anyway, and I have a whole video about this. I'll put it in the video description. I'm gonna have a quick a few quick points, and then we'll go on more to the rant. You guys love to hear my little angry rants, so we'll talk about why it's so hard to find good girls in 2024. But I think I said some of this. You know, small private social media. Her hose, sorry, her hose, her friends aren't hoes. She takes care of herself, goes to the gym, no drugs, no mental illness, feminine. Uh, she's been in long-term relationships before. She just knows how to cover herself very elegantly, never had a sugar daddy, mature, good communicator, arrives on time to dates, et cetera. I think, I think we know this. So let me get into the main rant here. So obviously the first culprit of why it's so hard to find a good girl in 2024 and beyond is the allure of social media. We were talking about this in the car on the way to the, to the gym. That's why we're so pumped up and jacked. <laughs> because the allure of free cash money and prizes just for showing your ass in a thong on Instagram is retarded. It's, it's so, I did a, a content piece with Lana, uh, this like Brazilian 15 that I'm dating 15, meaning 15 out of 10. And, and we talked about, she did a video about like what happens in her DMS. I mean, we're talking guys that are offering to pay her $20,000 to send feet pictures and talk once a week for an hour. Like they're, you know, Italian guys, German Insane. guys, American guys. So we, we as men can't really understand or relate to this. And you have to give, you know, some empathy, you know, young girl, I would, this is why we talked about one of the qualities of a high quality woman, a girlfriend material is like coachability. Because if I meet a girl with a public Instagram, I'm very, very young, I might, you know, have to enforce that and kind of teach her like, okay, listen, you know, it's not, a mature thing to do to run off to um, Vegas on a private jet anytime you you know feel like it, be taking Molly and nightclubs and getting these insane offers. But it's just a really, really hard thing for a girl to resist. Like I said, the free cash money and prizes that comes from showing a lot of skin, having a public Instagram, having a lot of followers. The, the DMs would blow your hair back if you actually knew what these true like, you know, eight, nine, and 10 girls. Fuck, even a 6.5 in Los Angeles is getting some amazing offers. You want to weigh in on this, Michael? Yeah, I mean, you know, having easiest access to attention in human history, you know, through social media, they can connect with so many people so easily from their living room. You know, they can post one picture in a bathing suit and have a thousand guys in their DMs who are all trying to take them out, all trying to spend money, all trying to give them cool new experiences in exchange for one thing. And I think it's almost kind of like a drug 
in yeah, some in some really ways, is. you know, because they have such easy access to it. And so I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think that they're bad people per se, but yeah. I think it's very important to have a girl who isn't into, you know, indulging in those things. She yeah. knows how to handle herself. She knows how to police herself. I think that's super important. Yeah, I understand that it's not real. These guys don't give a fuck about you, right? It's not real connection. It's just guys that want to use you as kind of like a, a human sex doll. And, you know, like I said, just to repeat really quickly, uh, us as men, we, we literally have no idea. You you guys, if you've never dated a true, you know, like I'm talking like a super legit hot girl in a big city, then you just have no idea. So that that's the first thing. That's why I talked about this. I'll keep coming back to that theme of coachability of like, listen, girl, it's not real. It's artificial uh attention it's not real connection these guys don't give a fuck about you they'll be inviting the next slew of you know hotties onto their yacht uh next weekend etc etc okay another point throughout human evolution there's some debate on this i'm not a uh cultural anthropologist by any means but it's been said and it's been studying there's been evidence to support that we lived in about 150 person tribes and that's how your brain evolved to remember intimate details names the roles of the people, et cetera, at about 150. After about 150, it gets really hard to remember all these intimate long-term details with everybody. And they just, you know, again, there's been evidence to support this. I'm not an anthropologist, but in today's society, like you talked about earlier, they post a photo, they have access to a thousand guys liking their photos, coming into their DMs, offering stuff. It's not normal to have every single male that you've ever interacted with since you were the age of 14 suddenly get really nervous around you and and, and not be able to to formulate a sentence and and just in, invite you everywhere and ha have my money and oh there's a problem with your car my cousin he he works on cars he'll fix your car and then and then the next guy oh i, I have this yacht and there, there, there's space on the yacht on on saturday if, if if you would like to come it's just not normal to have every guy think you're funny and intelligent and you have so much in common and wouldn't it be great if we hung out and this is why you know we call it what do we call it like hot girl syndrome i think we called it that something like that in the pickup artist community where they all think they're super funny they all think they're super smart and this is the only feedback they get and the only negative feedback they would get would be from some women and they just write that off as them being haters because for the most part they are so i don't know what do you what do you think about this yeah i mean i think if you are a beautiful girl that is all that you need to be in order to get male attention. And in fact, you really don't even need to be beautiful to get male attention either. Yeah. You definitely do not need to develop any kind of personality traits or humor or the ability to tell stories or to express yourself. Because at the end of the day, the majority of men are, well, men in general are just hardwired for the hunt or the chase. They're figuring out putting together a strategy, what do I need to do to achieve my end goal, whatever that is for that guy, but they're gonna do whatever it takes versus the mindset shift for a woman is different. She has all of these, you know, male suitors coming to her and regardless of, you know, how she talks or if, if she's funny or has a personality or is interesting, you know, guys are coming just uh, purely for beauty. So they really don't have to develop those personalities. Yeah, and it's traits. not natural. And there's only 150 people in the tribe, everyone. And, you know, people just live differently back then. You'd have to pull your weight in some way. Hot girls now do not have to pull their weight in any way, shape or form. But, you know, the way you evolved you know, there were the hunter gatherers, maybe some guy was good at, you know, making weapons, maybe, you know, the women weren't good at, you know, making the spears, but one woman was good at sharpening or like, uh, sorry, maybe the women weren't good at using the spears, but they were good at sharpening and making the spears for the men, whatever your role and says you had to pull your weight in some way. And it's just not natural to be worshipped just because uh, you were born, you know, genetically with a very symmetrical face, right? So I'll just move on. Unless yeah. you want to add something. Okay. Another big one. Pop culture is worse than ever before, and it is oh, actually yeah. destroying and brainwashing women. I'll, I'll make this one quick because I avoid pop culture like the plague. Maybe, I don't know, perhaps you are more familiar with the latest Cardi B or uh, Meg Thee Stallion songs. But Couldn't tell you. <laughs> basically, it's telling them that guys are only useful for money and dick. Like, get a guy with a fat wallet and a fat dick and be a hoe and answer every DM, go on every private jet, fly around the world being a hoe. I mean, Cardi B, 
Uh, there was a line from Rick Ross in a song. You know what I'm talking about? What I'm going to say, he said, um, it was a song called You Ain't Even Know It. And he said, oh, blah, 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 you ain't even know it, blah, 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 you ain't even know it. And then he said, I put Molly up in her drink, all up in her drink. She ain't even know it. I took her home and enjoyed that. She ain't even know it. Maybe not the most intelligent line, uh, you know, around the Me Too movement, that that line didn't age well about secretly drugging a girl with Molly. It was just a ridiculous line to say. He lost Adidas. He lost a shitload of sponsorships. Uh, I mean, it was a huge, huge blowback for talking about how he uh, put Molly, you know, in a girl's drink, which is, a, you know, if somebody put Molly in my drink, I I'm still coherent and aware enough. Like, I'm not going to like fuck like an ugly chick or a girl that I don't like just because I was given Molly. It's not the same as like uh, like an actual date rate job, but I get it. Very bad, very poor thing to say. Whereas in contrast, Cardi B talked about openly, habitually, not theoretically a made up verse in a song of something, you know, completely ridiculous that never even happened, but like actually admitted to over the course of years, drugging and robbing many guys when she was a stripper. And she was celebrated for that rather than scolded for that. Yeah, I mean, it just shows a double standard. Um, and I think in my opinion, in general, men have created such a safe environment for women to exist that they now no longer need us in the same way. And that's certainly what culture is, is teaching women is to essentially hate men, that they don't need men. Men are do not bring any value to the table because the woman can do everything that the man can. And in a society like the United States, you know, men have created such a safe space, a safe environment for women to be successful that now they're able to do those things. Yeah. Yeah. It was really a society. This is why when, when I hear, you know, launching into my next uh, one, going from pop culture influences are bad, launching into my next point, which is uh, cultural movements like feminism in general. I'm just wondering if we're living on the same planet when people talk about how oppressed women are. Women are more gainfully employed than men. They outnumber us in universities. They make more money than we do because they're more employed and stuff like that. There's no pay gap that ever existed. They get their entire social life sponsored. Even a girl who works a normal job is still going to more or less have her social activities fully sponsored by men. She's going to receive free validation. Uh, the loneliness rates, the suicide rates are incredibly much lower with, with women. I mean, you know, you look at a city like San Francisco, it's basically, you know, what is a guy to do there? All the women are ugly and hate men versus like the men are doing everything in their power to make themselves more attractive, going to the gym and whatever they can do to make some, this sounds more attractive. Women are actively cutting their hair and making themselves less attractive and still, you know, complaining. And this isn't anything that's really changed, you know, throughout human history. I mean, you know, I guess maybe you could make an argument, you know, a long time ago, women were oppressed by men, but even in like nature shows, right? Any, basically there's some exceptions. I know hyenas are an exception, but in almost any mammalian species, birds as well, you hear like, it's always like the British accent in those nature documentaries. It's like, the males must fight to the death and only the winners are awarded the right and privilege of mating. Or then you'll see the bird is dancing for the female's attention. You see like, you know, on planet earth, there's like the bird just like dancing, dancing. And like, they'll do this for hours and the females just watch. And whoever doesn't get tired first is the one who has the right to mate, whereas all women generally mate. You know, you have twice as many female ancestors as you do men because basically all women can mate if they want to and men have to literally fight many times to the death for the privilege to fight. So I'm just kind of wondering, you know, these incredibly anti-male, hateful, you know, feminist movements, I'm just wondering like, how are we even living on, you know, the same planet where people could come to this conclusion? Yeah, I mean, I think it just goes, it goes back to the point I was making just a second ago is men have created such a safe environment for everyone to be protected. And, and now everyone has the freedom to essentially do whatever they want. And so now, because we've created that safe space, it gives opportunity for, you know, things like that to happen. For whole behavior. <laughs> and yeah. All right. So another thing I wanted to talk about is men, let's take some responsibility for ourselves. Another reason why women generally have a low opinion of men, 
sticking on the topic of the video, why it's harder and harder to find a good girl who respects men is going to be a good girl is because men today, y'all are fucking pathetic. It's men terrible. are weaker and more bitch made than ever before. So we got to step up and take some responsibility. I'm going to look for this meme. I don't know if I can find it. I'll edit it in the video. And it just shows, you know, what, what it's going to look like when someone says, Oh, look, honey, I found a picture of your grandfather. If it's from the 1900s, he's badass. He's on a, wearing a leather jacket. He's on a motorcycle looking like fucking James Dean. And then what it's going to look like for future generations. Oh, look, a picture of your grandfather. He has his nails painted. He has like the, the vegan, you know, a, 10 inch arms. He's, you know, dressed really feminine. I mean, society has pushed to masculinize women and feminize men. And a lot of men uh, have accepted that role. I guess I'm a feminine little bitch now. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. <laughs> yeah. There's just a lot of, a lot of weak dudes out there. Okay. So another thing, two things I want to talk about, and maybe we would disagree on this one. Tattoos are more popular than ever. I'm not into women, you know, intentionally scarring their bodies. I guess you like tattoos on yourself, but you don't like it on women actually. Correct. I, I, because I think tattoos are a masculine thing. So I like to have tattoos myself and I will probably get even more tattoos if there's space left. But, uh, as far as a girl having tattoos, I mean, maybe having one or two little ones is okay. But I guess my point, in my opinion, every girl that has tattoos would be better looking without them. Yeah. You're just scarring. You're just drawing on Like when was the last time you saw like a majestic, beautiful tiger and said like, oh, you know what? That tiger is so awesome. But what if he just had a flaming skull, uh, you know, uh, tattooed on his side, then the tiger will, or, you know, a, a mushroom in Mario Brothers. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the other thing. There's just, there's just, there's just so, so many tiger. terrible yeah. tattoos. Anyway. And then another thing quick, you, you brought this up before, filming, before we started filming. Just another thing, just modesty is no longer respected in society. We're talking about, you know, why would your grandfather be in a sea of almost everyone would be a pretty modest, good girl uh, in his day. You know, there's no social media, but like, again, it's just now it's like celebrated. the more skin you can show off, the more guys you can get in your DMs, the more, you know, girls, they don't get Birkin bags and wear red bottoms to impress guys. 99 out of a hundred guys don't know what a Birkin bag is. Do you, do you watching this, the viewer, do you know what a Birkin bag is? It's some purse that it's just extremely exclusive. There's a finite number of them and they're worth tens of thousands, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a purse. But 99% of you didn't even know that. Most women in the United States that are, you know, especially competing in that upper echelon with other women, they know about this. They do this to impress other women and modesty is just not a thing that's respected in general. It's not, it's not rewarded, especially in American culture. Um, you know, because the, 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 I don't want to say quiet, but the the less spoken, more reserved girl who has boundaries, who knows how to police herself, who knows how to take care of herself. She's not going to be getting as much of the attention because it's much easier to give attention to the girl who has the thong picture on her Instagram or is wearing barely anything when she goes out to the club. But for those exact reasons, that's why we like the girls who have the boundaries, who aren't going to be going out because they know how to police themselves against the male attention. But yeah, in, in our culture, modesty is, it's just definitely yeah, it's not lost. being rewarded. It's a loss. All right. So we've kind of defined the situation. You know, you guys have told me that you love my, my angry rants. I'm not screaming as loud as I, as I could be because we're in a small room and there'd be a lot of uh, echo in this room. But anyway, trust me, I'm very, very angry about this. Yeah, he's been angry all day. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> so that's why I'm losing my hair. Um, so what are the solutions, right? Let's, let's talk more positively. So this is something uh, my good friend Myron Gaines from Fresh and Fit Podcast, we talk about this all the time. The only way to experience love, happiness, romance, connection, chemistry, et cetera, with a girl that's a good girl, doesn't look like complete shit in 2024 and beyond is to become a high value guy. Now we'll define that, you know, a bit more as, you know, as we go on, but you know, work on yourself. We'll just say in other terms, uh, become the best version of yourself. I'm going to do some quick bullet points. We can maybe, you know, come back to some of these. A lot of these are things that you don't need to hear from me. You've already heard them from any red pill guy helping men on YouTube, but I'll, I'll go through them. You know, it just never hurts to have a little fresher. So Jim, 
uh, you'll destroy your, your stress. You'll feel better. You'll look better. Uh, everything's kind of moving to online. So the better you look in your photos, the more matches you get, the more uh, options that you will get. Find and seek mentors, people who can help you out, uh, get into men's circles. I don't run any mastermind groups, so there's nothing you can pay me for. But if you know other guys that are trusted to have a, you know, an entrepreneurial network or some type of social club network where you can meet like-minded people who are on this journey of self-development, you know, get involved in that. Feel free to interrupt me, by the way, if you want to add on to, to any of these as I go through it. I talked about network. Um, I have very little clout. I think I have uh, 1,200 subscribers on my YouTube channel uh, at the time of making this video, but yet I was able to get on the largest men's podcast in the world, which is Fresh and Fit multiple times. And I did that before I even had like, you know, any YouTube at all. It's because, you know, my ability to network. I'm going to jump ahead of something at the bottom of my list. Um, practice cold approach pickup. So this is something that will build your, your social skills a lot. This is like, you know, we talked about weights for your body, the exact same way that you can put your muscles under stress and then tear the muscles down by putting a shitload of stress on them and putting at least to your body, a scary situation. When your body's pressing a barbell off of you, your body thinks like a boulder fell on itself. And if it doesn't get this off, I'm going to be crushed and I'm going to die. You have to force growth. You can do the exact same thing with your social. Do you, I mean, you've done some cold approach. You've done some boot camps. Talk on this for a second. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's a similar concept as to why it's important to go to the gym because the gym for example is not just about working on your body it's also about working on your mind so for example when you go to the gym and you're pushing out those last couple reps you know that last little piece of bitch inside of you is now leaving right because you're forcing it out through hard work through determination through you know creating systems in your life and i think cold approach uh, uh follows that same concept because man, it's, it's scary in general to think about the possibility of being rejected. And so every time that you overcome that fear of rejection and you go after the thing that you want, you're subliminally telling your mind like, fuck fear, fuck this feeling. I don't give a shit about what this other person thinks or wants. This is my goal and I'm going to do whatever it takes to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. And so your mindset will become better. And then you'll also just realize like, who cares? Like no one is really worried about what you are doing in your life. Everybody's kind of focused on their own thing. And so after you cold approach a bunch of girls, you'll realize like, this isn't a big deal at all. I am who I am. I don't need this person to like me. I'm just going to simply bring my, my energy to the table and I'm going to find the people that I connect with. It's not about the other person. It's, it's reframing your mindset. If you're with a group of guys and you're just out at some, you know, outdoor, you're by the beach, let's say, for instance, some beautiful girl is there. And then one guy from your group just gets up, goes talk to her and just gets, you know, ruthlessly rejected by her. Everyone in that group will be jealous that you were the one that actually had the balls to even fucking try with her. Trust me on that. So don't be afraid to do this in front of your friends. And if they make fun of you or, you know, tease you for it, first of all, 99% they won't. If they do, you need new friends. Going back to what I said about network and stuff like that and, you know, meeting mentors and, and, and like-minded people. But it's because they're jealous. They don't have the balls to, to do it themselves. Talking about, you know, again, um, about getting the bitch out of you, as Michael talked about with that last rep in the gym, he made that gym analogy. Another way to get the bitch out of you, drop the video games and do a martial art. I've talked about this before. I'm 5'10 and a half, maybe 5'11 on a good day, 170 pounds. I'm not the most intimidating, most, you know, alpha fighting UFC guy in the world, but I've been known to fuck people up at the same time. Right? I know how to fight. I did about five years of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've done... Uh, about a year, year and a half of Muay Thai. And there's been times where I have to defend myself. A uh, quick story, I remember I went to um, an all Latino frat at UCLA. And long story short, they didn't like seeing a white guy there picking up on all their Latina girls. And basically, I'm exaggerating somewhat, but like almost the whole frat tried to fight me and I had to put some guy down. Now I took some damage too, but they respected me enough that like if they kept coming after me, like damn, he put one of us down and you know, we could probably all, you know, like, like ants, just like jump on them and, and fuck them up. But, but no one was like, you know, like I was all bloodied up. The other guy was on the ground. I was fighting, you know, two, three, four, you know, at once, but I, you know, I stayed on my feet. I never went down. And the confidence that gives you when, 
you know, guys try to just step to you or would just any, and anytime two guys meet, you're always kind of sizing each other. There's like that little bit, you know, any guy who says yeah. that is not, you talk about that. Like anytime you meet a guy, you're like, if push come to shove. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I think it's just a natural defense mechanism, you know, because you got to size people up when you meet them and just understand like, Hey, if shit pops off, am I going to be able to take this guy or not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So, other things too, I'm just going to kind of, um, I have some notes here, build an awesome dating profile. Like I've said this before, um, if we were placing bets on which guy in general is going to be able to have the most success with women, you know, guy A is extremely good looking, but he's not on social media. Guy B is, you know, average looking or maybe slightly above average looking. And it just has a rock star social media. He's giving speeches on stage. He's traveling the world. He's in private jets. He's hanging out with cool people, always at the top restaurants, always at the most luxurious venues that guy is going to trounce the other guy because the good looking guy may have a higher like close percentage on the few girls they interacts with, but one guy can interact with a thousand, 10,000, you know, people a day. Um, shameless plug. I have a service where I can, you know, help guys and handle this, you know, for them. But this the reach from online is just, you know, incredible. Yeah. I mean, look, if you're on, if you're going for girls that are under the age of 30 years old, you just have to accept the fact that they're integrated with social media and your social media profile, including your dating profile, is a billboard for you and what you have to offer. And if you can take advantage of that, it's like a cheat code. It just automatically, before you even open your mouth, a whole lot has been said about who you are, what value you bring to the table, what kind of lifestyle you can provide to a potential mate, what kind of experiences she's going to be able to have with you, you know, who your friend group is, what kind of, you know, for example, if you have photos where other like high value guys or attractive women are there enjoying the photo with you, not like a sleazy, like, Hey, I've got my arm around nine different girls. That's not a good photo to have, but having a photo where you have a group of people and there's clearly high value guys and high, high value girls, that'll also make a girl say, Hey, if, these girls are comfortable around this guy, then there must be some positive thing to him. And so you can advertise yourself before you even have to say a word. And then when you start that conversation, it just makes things a world easier. It's like a resume. Exactly. In a way. It's yeah. like, it, it does the talking for you. I, and I talked about this before, so I'll make it short, but I can't message a Brazilian 10, hey, random Brazilian 10 that I found on Instagram. I just want you to know I'm intelligent. I've acquired a lot of wisdom in my life. That wisdom in my life is worth sharing to a large group of people. I'm successful. I got a little bit of cash in my pocket. I can't just say that to a girl that's super needy and pathetic, but I can post a 15 second reel of me giving a speech to a room full of 200 people and fucking owning the whole fucking room. That says it. And Instagram is a flexing app anyway, so it's kind of normal to flex. Moving on, one thing I talk about a lot and this kind of integrates with the whole social media thing, I'll, I'll integrate the two together, is small town girls. I don't necessarily mean they have to be from like the boonies out in the middle of nowhere. I lived with Walter, Fresh Print CEO, who's the other half of the Fresh and Fit podcast, largest male podcast in the world, 1.5 million subscribers. And he met, at least when I lived with him, the vast majority of the women that he um, encountered, let's say, from other cities outside of Miami where we live. So think about this. We're in Miami, which is world renowned for having the most beautiful women of any city in the United States. Yet he's the majority of the women he's flying in from other towns. Is it because Walter doesn't have the game, the ability, the status to meet women in Miami? Absolutely fucking not. He just found the women um, overseas, not overseas, and small towns, well, overseas as well, <laughs> uh, to have much better values, right? We, we talked about how um, by having a big social media, the allure of cash and prizes and high value guys is just too great. Small town girls don't really get that because there's just not that many high value guys in their city. If you want to go to the extreme example. Um, all right, Michael, what is the primera novia, the first girlfriend of every Colombian male that lives in a small town in the coast of Colombia? Just be honest. What, what do we know? So just to make sure I'm, I'm understanding the question. So when a Colombian guy has a first girlfriend, it's, it's yeah, I'll say gr female, uh, <laughs> the first female, a burra, 
Oh my <laughs> god! Oh. You forgot about this? He well, no, but he, I, he I didn't want to, know what you were getting at. Yeah, he, oh. does, he doesn't want to accept this. He okay? So I like sh- shun that out of my memory. <laughs> American men, you know, we, we travel the world together. We don't think that our culture is the best because we're Americans and, you know, white American culture is the best. And we're so arrogant. We try to understand the values of other peoples, but um, a still a norm to this day in coastal cities in Colombia is that the first girlfriend of any costeño male is is a donkey, a female donkey. They literally have sex with 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 donkeys. Um, I, I, I think you've tried to block this out. But we, we've talked about this. You didn't want to believe it for the long. I thought people were messing with us. This, 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 this is true. Yeah, this is certified not a joke. Like we have confirmed this with yeah. many, many people, guys, girls, people from the coast, people not from the coast. I mean, I know people that have said their family members involved yeah. in that type of behavior. They're called mama burras. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why we're bringing this up is because if I was to land in the DM inbox of a girl in Miami, who am I competing with? Uh, the last weekend's guy who took her on a yacht, some you know multimillionaire, some you know model from Norway that makes uh, five hundred thousand a year, et cetera. So the most high value guys in the world that are the upper echelon of the sexual uh, marketplace, right? What if I was to land in the inbox of a even more beautiful girl in a small coastal town of Colombia. She's literally going to compare me to a guy who has sex with animals. So it's not hard for me to compete. It's not hard for me to just impress her and think that I'm the greatest thing that ever entered her life. I'm so amazing. You know, this guy, well, for one, why do I like Casey? Well, he doesn't have sex with animals, so (laughs) pretty easy to compete. And then it's also small town girls. Yeah, there's just better values there. They're not you know, sugar daddies aren't as common. There are as many rich guys to have kind of, you know, spoiled them and made them bratty. Yeah. And I mean, there's just not nearly the sheer amount of access to attention. Now that's kind of to an extent been mitigated with social media. But if you have a girl that is in New York city, she's going to be surrounded by millions of male potential male suitors versus a girl in Arkansas is not going to have access to the same yeah. group of people. And so anything that you get a lot of very easily, you're not going to value it the same. Yeah, so by definition, yeah, you know, girl, like for example, a, you know, a kid who grows up in a wealthy family, they, they become spoiled, you know, girls that grow up with super easy access to attention from the time that they're young. It just, it tells them that they don't have to do anything. It, it takes the value away from it. Yeah, so guys are yeah. replaceable. There'll be another rich guy in your inbox, you know, the next weekend, use guys as success objects, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. No value. Okay. Just to wrap up, we'll, we'll wrap up here. The last thing I want to say, and we, we, we talked about this a little bit is learn how to identify what a good girl is in the first place. And we gave some, some bullet points. Again, I'll just say them, you know, really, really quickly again, a small private social media doesn't show a lot of skin in her pictures because if she does, she's advertising herself to uh, other guys. She's not constantly uh, posting stories of doing extravagant shit because, you know, most, most women don't earn a ridiculous salary. You know, women, if they're working, they tend to work like an 80, 90 grand a year job. And you can't just be going to, you know, Michelin rated restaurants, you know, $300 a plate on an 80 K salary. You know, that's that's typically men who have the type of money to have a business to afford those types of things. Private jets going to Dubai, even even if you work, if you make one hundred and twenty grand a year, you can't do those things. Yeah. And if a girl is making that type of money legitimately, it's going to be very easy to tell because you're going to know about some business that she has. She'll be in Forbes. (laughs) Right. Right. She's going to be in forums. But but also like she's going to be working a lot all the time, you know, so a girl that's always out traveling, a girl that's Mm -hmm. always out in the clubs, you know, doing at, at the fanciest dinners like. What, what they're going to advertise it too. They don't hide that. Yeah, they, exactly. they want the validation from other girls. They want other girls, you know, jealousy and validation. Yeah, you know, doesn't do drugs. Mentally stable, feminine, coachable. Um, treats your fans with respect. Pushes you to be the best version of yourself. Doesn't have a lot of guy friends. Not a good social media. Good communicator. Never had a sugar daddy. So just to wrap up, guys. You know, we talked about we defined the problem. Be the best version of yourself. Go to the gym, seek out high value, high value male friends, build a network, work on your social skills, do cold approach, understand that 
you can't swim against the current social media, dating apps, Instagram. I actually think Instagram is better to focus on than dating apps. We'll do future videos about that. But you just can't ignore it. You just you get on board or get left behind. You have to do this and go to, as we talked about, a more favorable dating market, which could be a foreign country, could be a smaller town. All the advantages we said with small town girls apply to foreign countries, even in big cities a lot of the time. And when I say easier dating markets, the last thing I'll, I'll wrap up with is an easier dating market doesn't have to even mean changing your location. You can fly girls into you or it can just be a different uh, platform. Like the hardest platform to meet women would be like something like Tinder. Moving down the list, Bumble and Hinge would be would be better. Uh, getting on Seeking.com. Now, very few good girls are going to be on there. It depends, you know, if you're looking to just, you know, have a good sex life, or you're looking for a good girl. But getting on a site like Seeking.com, instantly, if you're not getting any matches or any responses, you know, uh, or any love, you know, on these dating apps in the U.S., I promise you, virtually no matter what you look like, you get on seeking.com. That's technically, that's a, that's a site for girls looking for sugar daddies or affluent guys. Kind of goes against what we're saying, you know, looking for a good girl. I think if you meet a young girl that's feminine and coachable and you can get her when she's, you know, 18, 19, 20 off that site, she just, you know, she's new on the site, you know, you arrange by like, you know, new members. She joined a week ago and you can coach her and say, look, listen, girl, I understand you're 21 and don't know shit. But trust me, she, you know, she deletes that. She makes her Instagram private or deletes it for you. That might be the one exception. So that's one way you can go to an quote unquote easier dating market, you know, without actually like, it doesn't have to be necessarily changing your geography, but that's pretty much all I have to say. You know, it's getting harder and harder to find a good girl. We have a whole video. I'll put a link in the description on, you know, even going even more details of what makes a good girl. We've talked about some solutions. There's a lot of other content on this channel, you know, how to take your photos and other things to build this awesome social media uh, presence and, and get success on dating apps and responses to your DMs on Instagram. You can outsource the entire thing to me. That's my business. I help uh, affluent guys create a rock star dating life using online methods. They can even, you know, depending on how much you want to pay me, you can just do photos or you can outsource the entire thing. So I just bring you dates on a silver platter. Um, give me a follow uh, on Instagram, redbeardrants1. And this is a very random thing. If, um, if you guys are looking for an awesome way to make passive income through real estate, one of the best cash flow strategies and easiest ways to get started with the littlest capital needed up front is through short-term rentals. Basically Airbnb, booking.com. But you know, basically when we say short-term rentals, we're mostly talking about Airbnb. Michael is killing it in this game. He's doing really well. Uh, some domestic, but mostly international uh, real estate investing with short-term rentals. Do you wanna plug that, plug your Instagram or something there? Talk about that for a second. Yeah, absolutely. So you can follow my Instagram at underscore Michael dot Morrison or at STR coach Mike. Uh, those are both of my Instagrams. Yeah, STR is in short term rental STR coach Mike M I K E. I'll put it on the screen too. Yeah. Appreciate that. But yeah, I teach my students how to make five to $10,000 a month on Airbnb without owning a single piece of property. It's a business model that has allotted me time, freedom, location, freedom, and financial freedom. It is definitely a, you know, an active business model, but uh, as you start to learn the game, learn the system, you can implement software, you can hire employees and remove yourself from the business, but it's a way that you can invest in real estate. It's a way that you can start building cash flow very easily and you only need a fraction of the amount of money as compared to going and buying and that real getting estate. a mortgage and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So for just five or ten thousand dollars, you can invest and get one, possibly even two cash flowing properties up and running. And you can really do this business model anywhere in the world. And so uh, you can follow me if you have any questions. We post a bunch of valuable content on how to start and scale this business model. And certainly let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, that's it. That's in the rant. So keep hose for recreational use only only invest your time and your emotions and opening yourself up to good girls that is the end of the video peace